Hello everybody, Father Stephen Abrado, protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com, that's the featured link you see there. Tonight in the United States is the State of the Union Address. This is where the President of the United States addresses the American people. <clears throat> now, the President of the United States has nothing to say to me. I don't think he has anything to say to the United States. I think that the only thing he should be saying to the people of the United States is mea culpa, mea culpa, mea marcha, mea culpa. When um, he was running for president as a Catholic, I identified eight different ways he was defying his Catholic faith. And uh, I think it's more now. I think he's rejected his Catholic faith in so many ways, it uh, defies the imagination. And you, you guys know who I'm talking about. I don't need to mention his name. I don't even want to mention his name. It makes me sick to mention his name. Uh, it really does. <clears throat> but they call the address that he is giving tonight State of the Union. State of the Union, State of the United States, right? And uh, I'm thinking, what about the state of our soul? The state of his soul? I, I dare say I pray for his conversion every day. I pray for the conversion of all political leaders, especially Catholic political leaders who defy their faith. Um, so I want to talk about that. And I'm going to talk about not just the president. I'm going to talk about ourselves. Um, how are we? I mean, we're in the middle of Lent. Are we reflecting on the state of our souls? But I'm also going to talk about um, the conservative movement, the pro-life movement, uh, where we are in the Catholic Church, a few things like that. So the state of our soul, the state of our life, right? Let's pray. Well, first, uh, St. Perpetua and Felicity. So check out my Mass from this morning. <coughs> my Mass this morning was about division, how to overcome division, and it's through obedience. So check out my Mass and my homily and Eucharistic adoration from this morning. Today is the uh, memorial of St. Felicity and Perpetua. And St. Perpetua remind, uh, asks us, do you see this vessel? Can you call it by any other name than what it is? So then I cannot call myself by any other name than what I am, a Christian. So I, I think when she said, do you see this vessel? She's probably talking about her own soul, right? This vessel, right? We're all vessels. We should be vessels of Christ, right? Uh, vessels of Christianity. Vessels of God vessels of the Holy Spirit, right? We're temples of the Holy Spirit. We're vessels <coughs> holding the Holy Spirit, right? Can you call it by any other name than what it is? Therefore, I cannot call myself by any other name than what I am, a Christian. And of course, she was murdered for it, martyred for it. So St. Felicity and St. Perpetua, and I believe they were both uh, virgins, um, intercede for us. All right, let's start off. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan <coughs> and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, 
Seeking to ruin his souls. Amen. Let's consecrate ourselves to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, <coughs> pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, the eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promise of Christ. <clears throat> Let us pray. Remember, O most blessed Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thy intercession, was left unaided, inspired with this confidence, we fly unto thee. O Virgin of virgins, our mother, to you we come before you, we stand sinful and sorrowful. O Mother, the Word incarnate, despise not our petition, but in thy clemency hear and answer us. Amen. All right, name of the Father, Son, <coughs> Holy Spirit, amen. I'm sorry, it's March here. And so I'm being attacked. And please don't don't send me um you know uh remedies, all right. Um it's just some mornings I'm going to be attacked. And in the mornings I get attacked. But generally speaking, this is not a huge inconvenience for me. It may be a huge inconvenience for you listening to me cough, listening to my nasal uh presentation. <clears throat> but it's really of no comfort, and I offer it up, and I hope you offer it up each and every single day, too. Um, all right, so let's, let's look at uh, some of the things that I uh, uh, <laughs> All right, so three years ago, four years ago today, I prophesied about how the church was not fulfilling its obligation of Evangelium Vitae. And in just a couple of short weeks, uh, we were declared non-essential as a church worldwide, and abortion was declared essential health care. And um, I, I, again, I don't consider myself a prophet, although really a prophet is uh, merely somebody who proclaims the truth, proclaims the word of God, right, which is the truth. And the truth is the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. So if you're proclaiming the truth, then you're going to seem prophetic. Because down the road, they're going to say, uh, 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 <coughs> uh, something that, you know, came out, came out, uh, uh,
<clears throat> anyway, I've completely zoned out. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm sorry for zoning out, uh, but I wanted my uh, <clears throat> my throat to calm down here, and I was just reading something. Uh, here, Lenten Reflection. So this was from last year. I do not know why anyone is bothered by what Mass others attend or how others receive communion. There are surely people obsessed with with these issues, which will not be on the final exam. Where your heart is will be on the final exam. <clears throat> so where is your heart? What condition is your soul in? Joe Biden is in a lot of trouble. And you see how pharisaical he is because the more he tears himself away from the Catholic faith, the more arrogant he feels that he's always right and everyone's wrong. Um, it is just so demonstrative. He is uh, a depraved individual, for sure. He is an idolater, and his idolatry extends to himself. He adores himself. He has no redeeming virtues whatsoever, <clears throat> and I don't say that lightly. I say that fully understanding that he has he has absolutely no redeeming virtues. That's why I say he's depraved. He's devoid of any spiritual grace. It's been decades of him uh, optionally persevering and manifest grave sin, manifest grave evil, and that's what you see. <coughs> And so this is a serious, serious situation. So be prepared for a pro-abortion, pro-IVF State of the Union address. You can thank Margie Danifelser and Kristen Hawkins, Mike Pence, Lindsey Graham, 15-week ban and pro-IVF IVF sickening. We're losing big time since Dobbs. These women claim they were ready for post-Dobbs. It's been one blunder after another. Exceptions, backing Pence, refusal to unite around and focus on constitutional personal from the moment of conception. <coughs> So, you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, the state of the union of the United States, it's in horrible shape. We are really becoming more and more without a soul, devoid of a soul. That is evident most uh, in the president, his wife, his family, Democratic Party, we call the Democratic Party the party of commission. The Republican Party is the party of omission. You see it in the corruption and the, the, the moral corruption within the conservative movement and the irrelevance of the pro-life movement. 
<clears throat> you want to get an indication of how bad off the pro-life movement is. Uh, on the second anniversary of Dobbs, they're going to have an event in Washington, D.C. that's called Celebrate Life. Now, mind you, we are losing post-Dobbs. We're 0 for 7 in referendums. There's 13 more referendums in the progress, in, pro in the process. There's no indication that we'll win any of them because, uh, indeed, they're all evil. The other side is uh, going to lie, obfuscate. That's what they do. They have plenty of money. And we are not standing on what God is calling us to stand on. We're not standing on moral absolutes. We're not standing on <coughs> a constitutional person from the moment of conception. We're, we're not. We are standing on compromises, 15-week bans, rape and incest exceptions. We're standing on supporting people who support IVF, right? Uh, and we're celebrating life instead of desiring to abolish abortion. It is just, it's, it's kumbaya. Right? It, it really is. It's, it's an absolute disgrace. It's an embarrassment. <coughs> uh, yeah, it, it really is an embarrassment. Uh, this, 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 uh, event in Washington, D.C., I believe it's in Washington, D.C., that's celebrating life on the second anniversary of Dobbs, should be protested, should be protested by any serious pro-lifer who is sick and tired of the daily mass murder of pre-born children. Surely, uh, if not protested, let me put it another way, maybe not a protest, but surely... I think uh, they should be bringing abortion victim images to this event. We should be bringing the horrors of abortion to this event. We should be pointing out clearly the horrors of abortion, the horrors of the daily mass murder of pre-born children. The fact that the Democrats have been complicit and the, and the Republicans have been in omission about this issue now more than ever. The Republicans have completely divested themselves of uh, anything that would be remotely considered pro-life. <clears throat> They're supporting IVF. They are supporting, I don't even know what they're supporting. It doesn't seem like they're supporting a ban on any abortions. Trump's going backwards. The whole pro-life movement's going backwards. I mean, uh, since Dobbs. Uh, it, it just really is uh, absolutely amazing. State of our soul. So this, this came up to me before. This came to me before in my homily this morning. Uh, in, my, in my mass, the mass of St. Perpetua and Felicity, Thursday of the, what is it, the third week in Lent. We're more than halfway through Lent. <clears throat> and... Uh, On Pentecost, there was 120 people in the upper room. So let's think about that. 120 people in the upper room. Would the Holy Spirit descend upon the 120 people? Was that the totality of Christ followers? Was that the essence of the church? Was that the remnant of believers? Most likely. Not it's in totality for the most part, right? 120 people. This was after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and him appearing to hundreds and hundreds of people. Him ascending into heaven. 120 people at Pentecost. Let's think about how many people Jesus touched, fed, blessed, ate with during his public ministry, casted out demons. Thousands and thousands and thousands. Just the multiplication of loaves and fishes alone, thousands. 
people coming from all over the countryside to see Jesus. Whole towns coming to see Jesus. From all of Israel coming to see Jesus. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people ate with Jesus, were blessed by Jesus. Jesus prayed over them. Jesus casted out their demons, healed them, fed them, right? Where were all these people on Good Friday? How many people in the crowd, when Jesus was brought out by Pontius Pilate, here is your king, right? How many people in the crowd that were screaming, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, had, had ate with Jesus, drank with Jesus, been fed by Jesus, blessed by Jesus, prayed over by Jesus? And yet they were screaming, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. Right? Yet the Holy Spirit came down upon the church. <clears throat> The Holy Spirit came down upon the church at Pentecost and 120 people went out and brought conversion to the entire world. The people who were saying, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. How many people came? How many of those people repented of that sin and became Christian on Pentecost Sunday amongst those thousands? How many? See, this is where we find ourselves today, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is where we find ourselves today. Let's put that biblical time period, the three years of Jesus' life, Good Friday, the 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, the 50 days, and then, and then the 10 more days, Pentecost, right? All right. Let, let's put that today. Where, where are we today? Where are we? Who are we? Are we the Pharisees? Are we those who have been touched by Jesus and and said, and yet we're yelling, crucify him, crucify him? Right? I mean, there are people who are saying that the Pope is persecuting them. And yet we have Catholics all over the world that are being murdered for their faith. A case could be made for the fact that in the first world, the world influenced by the United States, the Catholic Church in the United States, that there's a great bit of hatred of the Pope. And yet all over the world, Right, the Pope's papal masses have dwarfed St. John Paul II's papal masses. Uh, this is very telling. And I bring this all up because I think it's time for us to reflect on where we are. Where, where are we? Where does our opinion of the Pope fall on the spectrum of charity. As 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 Saint Perpetuus said, you know, where 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 our opinion of the Pope, our obedience to all that Jesus taught, our submission to the authority of Christ Church on earth, the bride of the Holy Spirit, Christ Church on earth. Christ's authority on earth, our attitude towards the church. What does that say about us in terms of our Christianity? Our being willing to embrace sinners, embrace the marginalized, embrace those who are struggling in their faith, who maybe even have an animosity towards the Catholic Church have a hatred of the Catholic Church, Jesus says, you know, pray for your enemies. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Do we really do that? I, I struggle with that all the time. But I'm telling you, I'm going through a period of conversion. It started, you know, October 2nd. I'm going through this period of conversion where I'm beginning to see things 
far more objectively And I'm beginning to see so many things that are not Catholic, not Christian. By those of us who call ourselves Catholic, who call ourselves Christian. That is the obvious Joe Bidens who absolutely defy their Catholic faith and in defying their Catholic faith obviously hate their Catholic faith. They will never admit they hate their Catholic faith. But they hate the Catholic faith. What they love is their Catholic faith. Catholic faith that they uh, have formed in their mind, in their heart. But that's not the Catholic faith. It's their idolatry. It's their depravity. But I see this everywhere. I, 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 just, I, I just was talking to a dear friend of mine, and, and, I, and I said it's just absolutely amazing. How many people cannot find anything good to say about the Holy Father? How many people have nothing, can't find anything good in the Holy Father, say about the Holy Father? And that's very telling. It's very pharisaical. So we, each and every single one of us, really have to reflect on where our soul is where our hearts are, and where our hearts are is where our soul is. The soul, the, the heart is the center of our soul. St. Thomas Aquinas talks about the tripartite soul, our passions, which is the lowest part of our soul, the intellect, which is the highest part of our soul, and then the heart, the will, our desire is the, 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 the center of our soul, right? Where is our heart? Where is our mind? And that being said, where are we as a people, not just a Catholic people, but a conservative people politically, a people of life? I'm a pro-life, I'm an anti-abortion activist, actually. Uh, I'm not pro-life by some people's standards. I'm an anti-abortion activist, right? And pro-life has been so watered down that, you know, they're saying that if you're not for uh, climate change or climate control or whatever it is, you're, you're not pro-life. But the climate agenda is a population reduction agenda. So I say if you are for climate control, climate change, you aren't pro-life. I'm going to have nothing to do with anything that has to do with population reduction. But the conservative movement and the pro-life movement under the conservative movement seems to have a problem with moral absolutes. They don't really want to stand on the moral absolutes that our right to life is an inalienable right endowed by our creator, delineated in the Constitution seem to be okay with attacks on marriage and family, immoralities, promiscuity. And that's different than the Holy Father embracing the marginalized, embracing those who are lost, the lost, right? They're immersed in sinfulness, they're lost. The Holy Father's embracing them, trying to bring them to Jesus. The conservative movement and the pro-life movement embracing the same people. It's not about bringing them to Jesus. It's about tolerating them because they agree on one issue and one issue only, that abortion is murder. But even then, to what extent do they believe abortion is murder when they're willing to offer up 15-week bans, rape and incest exceptions, support candidates that support IVF? But it goes on and on and on. So I hope what I've, I've done today is shown you, because again... <clears throat> In the beginning, I was having this coughing fit, and then if you notice, it seemed like I zoned out. 
but I consciously wanted to calm down. I wanted to calm down. You can tell that I'm not near as animated as I normally am. Very calm. Because I wanted to be reflective and I wanted to portray that reflectiveness. And I think this is where we really need to be, to reflective, to be reflective, to be pondering all things in our heart, to be thinking about where we are in regards to the Pope, in regards to abortion, in regards to attacks on marriage and family, in regards to those who are marginalized, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, our persecutors, our enemies. Where are we? Where are we in regards to the Pope, in regards to the hierarchy of the church, in regards to the church, the church of the last 50 years, the church of the last 100 years? Where are we? What is the condition of our soul? What is the softness or hardness of our heart? What do, we, do we recognize that? So some things to think about, my brothers and sisters in Christ. I hope you will think about them. Father Stephen Abrado of protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Here's the featured link. Let's pray for the Pope, bishops, and priests now, in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ who through his death and resurrection has given us the hope of eternal happiness with you, Father. Send your Holy Spirit upon the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, that they may be for us bold witnesses of faithful love for the church, and remain for us examples of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> St. Joseph, St. Stephen, intercede for the Pope, all bishops, and all priests, especially in our hour of need. Our Lady of Guadalupe, intercede for the conversion of the world and the end to abortion. Amen. St. Joseph, intercede for us. Let's pray a Hail Mary for those who suffer physical and spiritual trials and tribulations. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. All right, again, my brothers and sisters of Christ, your daily offering. Make sure you do your daily offering each and every single day. As early as you can in the day, this is how we turn our day into a prayer, how we pray without ceasing. We offer up everything we do that day, united to Christ on the cross, and ask him to shed his mercy down upon us, right? All of our intentions, we want him to be merciful towards all of our intentions, right? Our personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, vocational ministerial intentions. The intentions of all those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, and the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each and every single day. At least of Christ's brethren, the conversion of the world, conversion of our families, right? Uh, the souls in purgatory, as I said. And this also, the whole heart thing, our soul thing, praying feeds our soul. And not just praying, verbalizing prayer, but listening to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, fills our soul. He will speak to us and fill our soul. Doing works of mercy, spiritual and corporal works of mercy, will fill our soul. And fill our soul to the point where there's nothing else that can get in there. There's nothing that can get in there and corrupt our hearts. And so when we find ourselves with some type of malice or anger or hatred towards anyone or anything. The way to remedy that is spiritual and corporal works of mercy. Prayer, fasting, right? That's what's going to fill our soul, soothe our hearts, right? I'm Father Stephen Abrado of protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. Check out my mass and my homily from this morning. Please subscribe to my Rumble channel, YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. Again, uh, share this video, one share per group, one share per page. Invite your family and friends to join us each day. May Almighty God bless you all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.